to make sure we have that clarity. So next Sunday, dress to be outside. It is a shelter. So if it's raining or drizzling, we'll get under the shelter. But the, the park is literally not even half a mile down the street from here, right here on Beatty's. So we will not have service in the building. You'll be here by yourself if you come. We'll be having service at the park. So we're going to have worship and a word and food and just celebrate uh, the good things. How many of y'all know for a church to remain standing for eight years, we need to give God some praise. Come on. Amen. And, and, we're, and we're not just thriving and surviving. We're overcoming in Jesus' name. We made it through the pandemic. Somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah. Amen. So we look forward to just celebrating all that God uh, is doing, all that God has done. Uh, if you're here with us, maybe you're a visitor, you're new, and you never received a sheet, uh, we have a sheet that might be going around to explain uh, the, some of the dramatic things that we do here in the service. But if you can also go to your website real quick, if you can, if you go to revivethecity.com, and uh, we'll have somebody put that up on the screen here, if possible, and click the home screen. If you click home, a little, a little drop box or whatever will appear, and it will say... Um, seven parts. It should say seven parts. And, um, and you'll be able to get that and click on that so you can do that. And if you want to receive the sheets, do we have any sheets to hand out this morning? If we do, please bring them. Uh, if we don't, we'll keep moving. You can go to the website. So I need seven volunteers this morning. Seven people. Just pick a seat. Amen. Seven. Give them a hand as they come. Seven volunteers. Amen. Seven. And any, any new people want to, okay, who had seven people, seven spots, and then go ahead and put the sign around your neck and be seated, put the sign so we can see it, amen, 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 all right, praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, they, they adjust the microphones, good job there. Amen. So once again, we just welcome you all to Revive Church. There's a couple of days uh, I want to talk about this morning, a couple of days. Anybody ever heard of Training Day? I know there, there's a movie out there like that. I'm not recommending you go see it. I'm just saying it's out there, but amen. Training Day, um, and so Training Day has to do with the day that we go into training. How many of y'all feel like every day is Training Day? How many of y'all out there just trials, tribulations, hardships? Back in the day, they had a song, I'm coming up on the rough side. See, like every day is training. What am I going to see raining? The raining day. Will we reign with him? Because the Bible says we're called to reign with him. Before you can reign with him, you've got to train with him. Amen. And so the training part, the Bible says, in the last days, many shall fall away from the faith. That's what the word of God says. And can I tell you why? It's not because he's blessing them too much. People aren't going to fall away because things are going well. People are going to fall away because things are not going so well. Difficulties, hardships, trials, tribulations. None of us want to hear about that stuff. But that's what training day is all about. So here's four days I want to talk to you about. The first day is salvation day. How many of y'all got saved one day? Come on. That was the born again. Amen. That was the salvation day. That's the day when you finally said yes to him. And if you didn't, today can be your day. Amen? Amen. The Bible says now is the what? The day of salvation. Now is the time so you can have your salvation day, your salvation moment today. Anybody heard of Judgment Day? Woo! Judgment Day is the final exam. Amen. The Bible says on that day, he who is righteous shall remain righteous still. He who is unrighteous shall remain unrighteous still. You know there's a bunch of folk in hell repenting every day right now. They're repenting, but there's no place for their repentance because once you take the final exam, you can't go back and change the grade. Now, with that understanding, let's give God the praise for training day because training day is to get you ready for judgment day. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> but today, I'm going to speak about a different day. Amen. I told you there's four days. What's the first one? Salvation day. The other one was training day. The last one is what? Judgment day, right. So unless your conscience is seared or God has turned you over or you have blasphemed the Holy Spirit and there's no hope for you, if you're sitting here and you are breathing, judgment day has not come yet for you. There's still time. Amen. 
There's still an, God always has extra credit. Come on, God always has a project. You, I don't care what your grade is right now. He has something you can do to take your grade to a passing grade before you leave this earth, but you've got to do something about it. Amen? Amen. You've got to do something about it. And so we have Salvation Day. We have Training Day. We have Judgment Day. But the title of my sermon today is Inspection Day inspection day there's a mic is that me making a noise extra mic okay that's me okay if we need to give me another one we can oh is that what it is thank you all right thank you very much sir see this is my training day right now thank you Okay, so for those who are new, once again, if we have the sheets, do we get the sheets to hand out? Uh, sure, do we have any? If not, you got to go online and get them. Uh, just go online. You have Is there one who needs one? Will there be one? I put my hand behind my back and wear a white glove. It, will there be one? Okay, all right, well, everybody can get them online. So right here on the stage, this represents, say me, this represents you on the stage, and this is at least seven parts of you. And we have the ex explanation for you online. And this is not because we are a cult. Amen. This is not because we're starting a new denomination. The Lord has given me a teaching gift. I'm just trying to make things simple and plain so you can overcome the devil. Amen. Simple as that. Praise God. So we have the will, the mind, the heart, the soul, the spirit, the flesh, and the body. And as we talked before, the will, the mind, the heart are all a part of the soul. So they're, all, they're all a part of the soul. That's why they're on two sides of the stage, even here. So today is inspection day. And so here's what's going to happen. You're just living your life and you're just going about your business. And then all of a sudden, you hear a knock at that door. Amen. You hear a knock at that door because God is now doing something new. Amen. God is doing something, and today is inspection day. I'm waiting for my inspector. Today is inspector. Thank you. Inspection day. Praise the Lord. Amen. I ain't had no more cues left. Okay, there we go. So he, give her a hand. Turn around. This is our inspector. Come on now. This is Inspector Kendra. How are you doing this morning, Inspector? I'm doing good. All right. We're so glad to have you. Thank you for taking the time to come down now. All right. Now, as I said before, there are different days. There's Salvation Day. Most of us were happy about that. God saved me. He washed me. He cleansed me. Okay, it's good. Now that we got to move on. Hebrews says we move on from that. Amen? So as we move on, as we move, as we move away from the fan, as we move on, as we move forward from that, then we've got training day because we need training for reigning because we're not going to do so well on Judgment Day. How many of y'all know that Judgment Day is not just heaven and hell? There's something called crowns and jewels. The Bible says that there'll be rewards for what you did do or didn't do. And I, I don't want to go through all the hell I've been through just to barely make it in. Now, if I barely make it in, that's good. I'm happy with that. But why settle for that when there's so much more that God has for you? So training day is so that you can be an overcomer. Do you know it's possible that whatever the devil throws at you, it doesn't bother you? How many of y'all know folk like that? Nothing bothers them. You can be like that. People who are overcomers, it doesn't mean they don't go through anything, but they've learned how to be an overcomer. Even in the midst of their hardships and the difficulties of life, they can still praise him. They can still magnify him. They can still glorify him. They can still look to him as the author and finisher of their faith. That even when they go through things that should make them quit and give up, they don't. It's not because they're better than you. It's because they went through some training. And they accepted that training. Now, if you understand that the goal here is so we can do well on Judgment Day, I'm taking time with this because here's what's important. Your attitude needs to change about Inspection Day. Your attitude needs to change about Inspection Day. Now, I'm going to a very important part of the service. Uh, amen. Y'all pay attention. This is important. I don't want anyone to miss this. Because if you're doing wrong, you're always concerned when the police come around. 
If your papers aren't right, you're always concerned when, when ICE or whatever the new, the new name is, when they come around and check in to see, are you a citizen? What is your, your status? Some of us get nervous when, when, when a police car gets behind us. And my speed. Look, that, sometimes they'll make you get into a wreck. Like you were doing fine today, showed them, like, what do you want? Like, what do you want? Like, just the feeling of what are you doing here? You start sweating, your heart starts palpitating. You're looking at your speed, speedometer. You're wondering, you know, is, is my, uh, uh, my registration up to date? Like, is my blink, are my blinkers work? I want to put my blinker on, but if it's not working, now they got me. So I just, if I, you know, what, what do I do? And then I start, you know, going over the lines, not because I'm drunk, but just because I'm terrified. But it's like, what do you want with me, right? What do you want? And there's an attitude. And God, when God came and he asked Adam, where are you? There was an attitude because he knew he didn't want to be inspected on that day. That wasn't a day. That wasn't a good day for inspection. My wife does room inspections. Thank God she don't get me. <laughs> but she gets my kids. We have five kids. They don't like room inspection because my wife is gifted. She's gifted because she will find something even if nothing is there. Amen. I think she just plants stuff in a room. <laughs> she will find something. And so people don't like. But then there's some of y'all who love inspection day. Teacher, pick me. Pick, ooh, ooh, pick me. I want to answer the question. I need an example. Oh, I want to be the example. And sometimes some of us hate those kind of people. That's what's wrong with you. But, but here's the thing, because <laughs> can I tell you a little secret? The Holy Spirit is not going to judge you. The Bible says that Jesus will judge you. The Holy Spirit is here to help you. And when you, look, raise your hand. When you ignore the Holy Spirit, all you're doing is hurting yourself. You know how we do, when we get away with something, we feel like that's victory. Whew, I didn't get caught. Hallelujah. Thank you. No, no, you shouldn't have had something to worry about getting caught. The problem is not getting caught or not. God is not concerned about whether you got away with it. He's concerned about whether you're living right or not. And inspection day, all inspection day is, is a pretend judgment day. It's a, a pretend test. A pretend quiz. Come on now. It's a pretend. Don't get, some of y'all say, I don't want to take a pretend exam. I might get a low grade. No, you want to get the low grade on the pretend exam. You, 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 if, if you're going to fail something, fail the inspection, not the last exam. Because if you fail the last exam, there's no more grace for you. Grace does not extend beyond the grade. You find me a verse where it says it does. It does not extend. And the Bible says it's not the Father who will be sitting as judge on the white throne. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's the Son. And why is that deep? Because the Son is the one you have to reject for salvation. You rejected him, but he's the same one who's going to be sitting there. But I thought his blood, his blood has been shed. In his new glorified, look, his new glorified body doesn't have blood. The Bible says that. Bones and flesh, there is no blood in the body of Jesus right now. Why? Because it's on you. It's it's all biblical. I mean, mean, I'd give you the verse. I didn't plan to go this deep into it, but you you fact check me. Jesus doesn't go. The Bible says, Hebrew says, there's no more blood for you because he's not going to the cross again. He can't and he won't because even if he wanted to, there's nothing to shed. He already shed it. So the timeline for us to get it right is now. And so when there's an inspection, don't run from the inspection. Look, Adam, where are you? What do you mean where I am? What you, why are you wearing those leaves? What do you mean why I'm wearing? Cain, uh, Cain, where are you? What are you talking about? Where's your brother? Am I my brother's keeper? How about David? Search me. When David got in trouble and God said, what punishment do you want? He said, I'll put my, myself in your hands. You choose my judgment for me. I'd rather be in the hands of God. I'd rather have God beat me up. Some of y'all think these boys and girls in the street love you. They don't love you because after they get what they want to get from you and you have nothing else, they will dump you. So before I can preach, I have to get your mind right. We, we got to stop running from the inspector. Now, if it's the police, that's, I'm not talking about the police. Amen? 
If my kids did something, I might not tell the police where they are. That's just pass it out. Pray for me. Like, you, you get paid to find them, you find them. I plead the fifth. I got five kids, I plead the fifth. That's just some real natural talk. That's me, though. You can, you can, you know, you do what you got to do. We're not talking about your kids now and some natural thing. We're talking about your eternity. The, really, the Holy Spirit says, the Bible says the Holy Spirit came. Jesus said the Holy Spirit came so he could convict the world of sin. Why, 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 why God trying to make me feel bad about what I did? Why is the church trying to make me feel? So you'll repent. If you don't, the Bible says 1 John 1, 9, if. It doesn't say your sins are automatically washed, my friends. It says if you confess your sins, if. Then he is faithful and just. And what brings us to a place of con 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 confession? Conviction. And who brings conviction? Put it up there. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin. Then it says the Holy Spirit is the comforter. Why? Because after you done get a whooping from the Father, you need somebody to comfort you. Amen. That's how them old time uh, parents did. I'm from the Caribbean. The same woman who whipped you and put them marks on you is the same one rubbing some oil on you so you feel better. Sounds weird and strange. If you did the right thing, you wouldn't have to go through that experience. See, he's the comforter, and then he's the teacher. This morning, he's being the teacher. Because why do we need the Holy Spirit to be the teacher? Because some of us get the answers wrong on the test, not because we're dumb or stupid, but we just don't understand. And so we need some better teaching. Not necessarily deeper teaching, just better teaching so we can have a better understanding. Amen. Because whether you like it or not, we all have to take the same test. We all have to take the same quiz. We all have to answer for the blood. We all have to answer for the word. Ignorant or not, we're going to have to stand before God and give an account for our whole entire lives. And your mama won't stand with you. Your daddy won't stand with you. Pastor Doss can't stand with you. And your prayer friend won't stand with you. That person who gave you the wrong advice won't be there to stand with you. And so if we can allow the inspector, if we can allow the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth, to come and inspect our lives, then let him check us thoroughly. David understood this. That's why he said, search me. And some of y'all don't want to be searched because of the spirit of pride. What if they find something wrong? Let me tell you something. He will. If, if my wife can find something wrong in your house... The Holy Spirit will find, and it's not to belittle you, it's to help you. Because the Holy Spirit is also the helper. So after he's convicted you, after he's taught you, and you're like, okay, I'm wrong, I admit it. He says, no problem, I'm also here to help you. But once the exam starts, I can't say a word. Because that's called cheating. And the exam begins when your eyes close. And you stand before God, and you're like, I wish I did this, I wish I did that. You, you, you can live a life of no regrets by allowing the Holy Spirit to convict you now. Wow. Somebody give God some praise. <laughs> Amen. So, Miss Inspector, knock on the door. The inspector's here. Let's see their faces. Some of them, I don't know what they're, okay. <laughs> he, he turned his side. So come on over here to the wheel. So the inspector first comes to the wheel. Go ahead, do some inspecting, looking, some, taking some notes. And, all right, so over here at the wheel, as the inspector is inspecting, we, we see this particular person does a pretty good job of making decisions. You know, pretty good job of executing, making those decisions, making good decisions. You know, some bad decisions here and there, but the inspector decided you're getting a B. So give her a hand to wheel. The will in this person gets to be. Hold it up. All right. Let everybody know what you got. Give her a hand. She got to be. All right. The inspector's now going over here to the mind. What you been thinking about? Well, well, well I, I, I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't ask you what you did. I'm asking what you're thinking. Because in Matthew, if you thought about sleeping with her, you did. If you thought about killing him, you did. And so we need, we need some inspection of the mind. But, you know, this particular person has a sharp mind, good mind. So that, you know what? They got an A. Come on. Give them a hand. They got an A. Woo! But, you know, if the 
this person got an A, how come their life is looking like the way it is? What's going on? Is something still wrong with them? Mm, now we're going to inspect the heart. What's going on with those feelings and emotions? This particular person is unforgiveness. They're having a hard time forgiving people. Like if you saved yourself, having a hard time forgiving people. Like you ain't never done nothing wrong, having a hard time forgiving people. And if, and if God were to put up on the screen everything you did and everything you thought, but you're having a hard time forgiving people when God didn't have a hard time forgiving you. But because this person is holding on to the unforgiveness and this and bitterness, and, and you know what? They're struggling. The Lord knows they're struggling. See, the inspector doesn't just throw out grades. The Holy Spirit says, look, I'm going to show you where you are, but I'm also going to walk with you. The Bible says, Jesus said that he left the ministry gifts, the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the teachers, and the evangelists so we can collect your offering. No. For the edifying of the church, of the saints, to build you up so you can come into what? Maturity. What's maturity? Getting a better grade. Maturity means you don't have as many accidents. You don't have as many speeding tickets. I know at least five people, at least five people who lost their car just because they didn't do an oil change. Did you know you can lose your car over not having oil? Perfectly good cars but they didn't, I bet you they learned how to maintain it later on. That's a big loss, amen? Would you rather have a loss now or a loss in eternity? I'd rather have a loss now because I can learn from my loss, and as long as my eyes are still open, I can retake my test. I can retake my quiz. I can retake the class. Are you following me? So this particular person got to see. All right, there was some mercy and grace there, but God says, we got we to work. You pass. And then overall, let's go over here to the soul. They got a B plus. Come on, the whole thing got a B plus. There we go. All right, this week the soul wasn't focusing on self. And you know what? The last time the inspector came, the soul overall got a C. They're at a B plus. Somebody give God some praise. Come on now. But, it, but isn't everything relative? Because if I, if I told you last time they got an A, that means that was they're doing worse than they did before. But the B plus means that this person has improved. And when we, we see that, then we can, we can definitely understand and celebrate. Let's go over here to the spirit. And uh, for those who are new, this is not the Holy Spirit. This is the spirit of man, the spirit of woman. I have all the scriptures. Uh, if you're new, go to revivethecity.com, click home, and it'll talk about my seven parts. My sin. So the spirit of man, which communicates with the spirit of God, the Bible says his spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. Clearly in that verse, it lets you know there's two different entities here. Amen? His spirit bears witness with our spirit. Now, can his spirit live in us? Yes. Can the spirit of Christ live in us? Yes. We're not talking about that part. We're just talking about what belongs to you, what you own, what fuels you. And one day when I preach about the spirit, you, you, everyone has a spirit, but everybody's spirit is not born again. Everyone's spirit is not saved. That's something you have to make a decision. The soul has to make the decision, then the spirit can be quickened and become born again. Are people who are Hindus, do they have a spirit? They do. Are people who are Buddhists, do they have a spirit? People who are Muslim, do they have a spirit? Are they born again? No, they're not because they, they haven't chosen Christ to be born again. Amen? And so, so here we have the spirit, but here's the thing. This person is doing pretty well as a person, but they ain't been going to church. Well, I don't need to go to church. Not even online. Not even some, look, they're not even opening their Bible. So they have a C. It wasn't a failure, but they have a C. And, and, and see, the Holy Spirit don't just throw you a C, but start talking. So here's what we got to do. Here's, here's what needs to happen. Here's how you can improve that. Here's how you can do better. The Bible says that there was a battle that Israel was fighting. They were actually fighting it against Benjamin because Benjamin had gone south. They had gone foul. And they fought the first battle against Benjamin, and God says, you're going to win it, and they lost the battle. 
So they came back to God and said, what do we need to do? What do we need to adjust? They made adjustments. They went and fought again. They lost the battle a second time. They came back. This time they fasted. They made some adjustments, and they won the battle the third time. Can I go there with you? Jesus prayed for a man the first time. He wasn't fully healed. It's in the Bible. He came back and said, dude, you done spit in my face. Yeah, he spit in the dirt, rubbed it in his eyes. When he washed it, he came back and said, I see some improvement, but I still see men, and they look like trees. I love it when God tells the whole truth. So what, Jesus wasn't enough? I know he was, but, but the Lord put that in there so you won't quit when things don't work out the first time. We don't see the Jesus kneel down. What happened? He just said, okay, I pray for him again. And he got healed the second time. Are you following me? How many of y'all didn't get your breakthrough just because you stopped praying one time too short? Yes. Naaman had to dip seven times. How many of y'all dipped six and didn't get your breakthrough because you didn't dip seven? I'm trying to help somebody. This is all Bible, amen? Yes. All right. This is all scripture. So what happens here is, um, so the Spirit then now tells you, the Holy Spirit begins to teach you, Here's how you can improve, what you can do better so you can bring the grade up. But you see, the Bible says the spirit is the spirit of truth, so he can't lie about your grade. Yes, yes, yes. He'll help you to get a better grade later, but he's going to tell you and the Father the truth about what grade you have right now. All right, now we're going to go over to the flesh. I wonder what kind of grade the flesh got here. Let's see the grade. Give him the grade. No, 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 that's not a good thing. Got him. Amen, I got no, that. That's not a good thing. Because when your flesh is winning, that means you're living a life that's self-centered. What I want, what I feel. See, American church, we thank God for it, but the problem is we make it too nice for y'all. In some third world countries, there's no air conditioning. Would you still go to church? The praise and worship singers might not be on key at all. Would you still go to church? No sound equipment. There might be dust floating. There might be insects all over the place. Would you, would you still? So you might have to walk from out. So I'm just saying the reality is some of us, our spiritual strength is based upon the supporting actors and actresses. My mama prayed for me. When my father got saved. He was a Hindu. His family was cursing him, not praying for him. There was nobody in his family praying for him. He was the only one who got saved, and they pretty much put him out the family. But before he died, he led his parents to Christ. All of his brothers and sisters, amen, nieces, nephews, except for one brother. But one of the, one of the nephews he led to Christ flew to England and led that last brother to Christ before he died. So I'm, I'm glad you're clapping for him, amen, but can we clap for you the same way? Because if your flesh has an A, you would never survive those environments. You would fall away even before you had a reason to. <laughs> Why would you leave Jesus? It was boring. Service was too long. I'd rather be in hell. I'm good. Y'all enjoy Revive Church? Amen. This is who we are. This is what we do. Amen. So... The last one here. Let's see what the body got. I mean, the flesh was great. Let's see the, oh, oh, what's that? What's, the body got a D. The body got a D. You know why this particular body got a D? They don't eat right. They in church a lot. And they shout dancing and whatever it is. And Look how sharp the mind is. This person can teach the word up and down, but they're having a problem living it. They can break it down for you, but they broke down themselves. So they got, they got a D. Somebody give God some praise. Y'all can be seated. You can put your signs in your chair. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's go on with the word. Let's go ahead right now. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10. Jeremiah 17, 10. And that's in the uh, New International Version this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless y'all. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It says here, I am the Lord. So I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind. You see that? 
I search the heart. Doesn't that sound like an inspector? You know what it says? I search the heart. I examine. How many of y'all want to go to a doctor who just starts cutting on you when you walk through the door? They need to have some sort of inspection, right? Check me out, doc. Don't just start cutting on me. Amen. Some ministries will just start cutting on you because they can. But the inspection needs to happen first. I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind for what reason? To reward each person according to their conduct and according to what their deeds deserve. Their deeds deserve. So what is a reward? It is a payment or a result from what you have done. A reward is judgment. And you know when they say the judgment is for the plaintiff, like judgment doesn't have to be a bad thing. The judgment could mean you got a million dollars. Amen. So don't be afraid of judgment. Be afraid of, of, of being wrong when you go to judgment. It is proof of what you have learned, and so it is like a grade. A reward is like a grade. And the grade gives you a snapshot of your current state of being. It assesses the quality of different areas of your life. So you notice over here we talked about the soul. The different parts of the soul had a different grade, and then overall there was a B+. Plus. But how many of y'all know if we don't understand how to break it down and specifically work on certain areas, just like in the physical body, if your issue is you have too much hanging here or something hanging here, whatever, you, if you do the wrong exercise, you're just strengthening the wrong parts. You have to identify the area of weakness and allow the Holy Spirit to work on that. Come on, I want to get off this point, but I can't. Check this out. Many of us, we look like we're strong in the faith because we exercise the areas we're strong in already, and people don't know how weak we are until we marry them. Or we become their business partner, or we serve with them in ministry, or we become roommates. Or when you have a close situation, like, yo, I knew about this, but what in the ham sandwich? Because we, we learn how to hide our weaknesses and actually strengthen our strengths when the Holy Spirit says you didn't need to be saved for your strength. You need salvation for your weakness. Now, of course, for every part of you, but I think you understand what I'm saying. And so <laughs> we want God to make our strengths even stronger. He's like, no, nah, I didn't come for that. I came for the hidden part. I came for the trashy part. I came for the stinky part. Well, what if it smells? Jesus said, I grew up in the ghetto. I have no problem with bad smells. Come on, I'm acquainted with grief. Come on, a man acquainted with sorrow. I've been rejected, lied on, spit on. Come on, and I'm here to help you. Now, in North Carolina especially, uh, in North Carolina specifically, the health inspector visits restaurants and gives them a what? A grade. Come on in. There it is. And the grade is posted where? It's posted publicly. Now, how would you feel like going to a restaurant and like, we're not going to show you our grade, but come on in. That's how we do as Christians. I don't want you to see who I really am, but let me give you a sermon. Let me pray for you. Let me counsel you. Let me, but I don't want you to see the real great. Are you following me? All right. When you're looking for a great, great place to eat or you need something done uh, and, and you search for services, you can also look up their reviews. And a review is a, it's a grade. And most reviews will tell you why they got that grade. I know some are erroneous, but every, you know, come on now. This assists you with making a decision to go to that particular product or company. Why ain't the Lord using me? Look at your grade. He don't love me. He loves you, but he doesn't love your grade. So what are, what are four criteria? What are four criteria that you will be graded on? I'm not saying these are the only four, but here's four right here. All right. Number one is the word. Number two is your lifestyle, not your neighbors, not your spouses, or your kids. I can't believe what my kids are doing. I can't believe what you're doing. <laughs> Number three, listen carefully, is listening and responding to the leading or the voice of the Holy Spirit. 
Well, I didn't even know he had a voice. I never heard him speak. You, you're going to be great on that. You might want to understand how to hear his voice. And we can help. Number four is how well you are pursuing or fulfilling what you want to do. No, your assignment. Your assignment. There are some people that will get to heaven and they might have had a church with five million members and God says you failed. They might say, well, why? Didn't I prophesy in your name? Come on now. I'm going Bible. Didn't I do this in your name? You did, but you did it with the wrong heart or you didn't do the assignment. I sent your tail to India. You said I'm going to England instead. But, you know, Lord, I know you sent me to Nineveh. I went to Tarshish, and I had a revival service in Tarshish. God said, I'm glad for those souls that got saved, but that was not your assignment. You are going to be graded and judged on the assignment I gave you. But I did better than him. I did better than her. God says, I'm not judging you on either one of them because neither one of them died on the cross for your sins. What is your assignment, and how well did you fulfill that? It's like sitting in math class and writing a beautiful essay for English. You're going to fail math class because the assignment was not English. It was math. And you chose to do what you wanted to do. I got a scripture for you. The Bible says that Abel's sacrifice was accepted and Cain's wasn't. And it doesn't say that Cain brought bad fruits and vegetables. It simply implies he just brought the wrong sacrifice. My, my, my. So let's look at the word. Number one. Pastor has what for you? Scripture. Scripture. Psalm 119.11, NIV. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And let's look at an example here. An example is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 through 3 in the New Living Translation. We're going to go quickly. Amen. It says, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you, and you will have a long life on the earth. Is that scripture? So do we do this because we like our father and mother? Some of our father and mother are not too likable. Come on now. Some of our father and mother did us wrong and did us dirty, but we, we do for them not because we want to. We do for them because when you stand before God, he's not going to ask you what you felt like doing. He's going to ask you, what did my word say? The word is the textbook, and we're being quizzed and te- tested from the textbook. I ain't say it was easy, y'all. I'm just giving y'all some teaching. Amen. And I'm going to whip you and then rub some oil on you at the end. <laughs> Number two, you're going to be um, uh, tested and graded on your lifestyle. On your lifestyle. Are you living foul or what? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. Here's what the word says. Since you are God's dear children, you must try to be like him. I love the way this is written. It's making it clear. You must try to be like him. But I can't be like him. Try. Your life must be controlled by love, just as Christ loved us and gave his life for us as a sweet-smelling offering and sacrifice that pleases God. Since you are God's people, it is not right that any matters of sexual immorality or indecency or greed should be even mentioned amongst you. Nor is it fitting for you to use language which is obscene, profane or vulgar. Rather, you should give thanks to God. You may be sure that no one who is immoral, indecent, or greedy, for greed is a form of idolatry, will ever receive a share in the kingdom of Christ and of God. You will be tested uh, and you will be um, inspected in your lifestyle. Pastor, I'm not doing well. We know you're not doing well. How many of y'all not doing too well? Raise your hand. Come on now. That's why we come to church. That's why we have this teaching. Amen? So we can do what? Better. Come on. You didn't fail yet. You're still alive. Amen? You can work it out. All right. And then number, number three is this, the voice of the Holy Spirit. You'll be tested based upon what he told you. Like I said before, you might find someone who is 
living holy, living righteous, preaching, teaching. And like, wow, they're doing great. But the Holy Spirit told them to witness to their neighbor, and they told the Holy Spirit no. You don't know that because there's still signs and wonders following. You don't know that because they know a lot of scripture verses. You don't know that because they can speak in tongues and God is still using them. God used a donkey to talk. Amen. How impressive is that? Amen. You know, we, we as good as a donkey when it comes to talking. Come on now. But you will be judged based upon what he told you. And, and, and you're like, well, what if I don't know what he told me? Then God's not talking to you. Some of y'all, you know he spoke to you. You know it. I can smell that hellfire now. And, and, and the reason why it's dangerous, because the yes is not for you. It's for somebody else. Who You are the answer to their prayer. Come on. And when you don't do it, they call God a liar. The Bible says that when he blesses you, he calls men to give to your bosom. What if everybody who helped you along the way said no? Most of y'all wouldn't be sick. Come on now. There's somebody somewhere who said yes to you for you to be where you are today. And the problem, you don't want to say yes to the next person and you're forgetting you don't need God to hold back on you. What did Mordecai tell Esther? God will use somebody else, but you and your household will be destroyed. That's what he told Esther. And then she said, oh, hold on, I changed my mind. Just give me three days to get my makeup right, amen? I want to make sure the king know I came in there. Give me three days. Give me three days. All right now. And it worked. Luke chapter 4, verse 1, NIV. Jesus, full of, the, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into a praise and worship service. I'm sorry. No, no. He was led by the Spirit into his next. No, no. He was led by the Spirit to, into a mansion, a, a brand new car. <laughs> he was led by the Spirit to, into a place. Where, no, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. That, that doesn't even sound right. So that's why it's not just the word. Let me tell you why it's not just the word, because you can pick and choose the scriptures you want. You have churches where there are ordained gays and lesbians leading the church. We're not just talking about, oh, you welcome. Look, if you gay or lesbian or trans, you are welcome here in Revive Church. You are welcome. But to be ordained as a pastor and a leader, even a bishop, you can't even be messing around straight or any kind of, are you following me? You ain't even touching liquor. If you're a deacon, that's what the word says. But how do we get to that place? Because there's enough verses we can skip over and pick and choose the verses we want. That's where the Holy Spirit says, I got a fix for you. I'll talk to you directly. Y'all might want to stop praying this Lord speak to me because he might tell you something you don't want to hear. But he was full of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit then spoke to him and said, we're going into the wilderness. Led him. See, look, how does this help some of y'all? Because the devil will tell some of y'all, man, God must not be in my life. Look at what I'm going through. I must be a failure. Look at what I'm going through. I'm not good enough. Look, no, Jesus, the Son of God, went into a wilderness because the Holy Spirit led him there. It was for a reason and a purpose, but he led him there. That's why the Bible says, my sheep know my voice. And that's critical because sometimes where he's leading you doesn't make sense. That's why when the mind of Christ, the natural mind of Christ kicked in, he was in Gethsemane saying, this don't make too much sense. Like, is there another way? Like, Father, you know, you're the creator. Can you create another way? He's like, no, nah, we created you. <laughs> and remember, you helped me create you because you created all things, including yourself. Oh, the word became flesh and dwelt. Oh, okay, well, nevertheless, not my will. Not my will. And even if he said, I'm doing it, he was outvoted. The Father and the Spirit said, you go. <laughs> he was out. Anyway, praise God. Uh, Acts chapter 16, verse 6. So you might say, well, that's Jesus. Here's somebody who's not Jesus. Next, listen to this. Paul and Silas traveled through the area of, of uh, Phrygia and Galatia because the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the gospel. Come on, we got, we got to, 
that don't that sound like total heresy and come let's go there man you 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 have that nephew i want to bless him god says no right now he's cursed and if you bless him you participate in his curse in other words he's under judgment i'm dealing with him and I, i'm gonna go there for you but your dumb self keeps enabling him so he can't learn his lesson if the Holy Spirit can say there's a reason why they don't deserve the gospel right now, you better listen to the, is it in the word? Was this Jesus or somebody other than Jesus? And, and let me tell you something. Look, if, they was, if it was me, look, we got to remember, they didn't have Delta Airlines back then. They didn't have American Airlines. They didn't even have bicycles, my friend. So they probably went through, they probably said, Lord, we, we probably, they probably traveled for days and weeks to get to the borderline of Asia. And the Holy Spirit says, no, nah, we're not going to preach there. Go somewhere else. And I just took off five days from work. And you, you know what? They're going to hear this sermon today. They're going to know. Can, can, can we clap for the clarity of the word? Really, seriously. See? I want y'all to understand that one of the reasons we come to Revive Church is because God has given this ministry just an anointing to help us to review the stuff we already know. I don't have no new doctrine, amen? The stuff we are, and to bring it to our attention and to bring just better lighting on it. Yes. Same thing, praise God. Yes. But, but so we can get everything out of the word we're supposed to get. And by doing that, it brings understanding because now for some of you, things have been unlocked. Oh, God might lead me to do something that doesn't make sense, and that's okay because it's in the Word. God might be telling me don't witness to them right now. But there's another verse that says in season and out of season, absolutely, unless the Holy Spirit says no. In Romans 1, the Bible says when you've been turned over, there's nothing you can do to say to somebody when their conscience is seared and God has turned them over. All you can do is pray for them at a distance. And if you try to do anything, just like casting a pearl before swine, and when they say swine, it's not a cute little piggy. This little piggy went to the market. You look up some of them pigs in Africa that will hunt people down. And they can tear you to pieces. But I was trying to share something good with them. But it wasn't your season to do that. Some of us cut our lives and our ministry short. Let me go there. Here's a little John Doss revelation real quick. And I could be off. I don't mind. I've been off before. It's okay. But um, when you read scripture, Paul was having amazing breakthroughs in ministry. And the Bible says there was this little girl, probably a teenager or a young lady or whatever, and she was, uh, she was into sorcery. So, so she was a psychic. You can pull it up if you can find it. She was a psychic. And so, you know what she was saying? She wasn't saying, pray Satan. She wasn't saying, you know, don't listen to them. She was saying, these men are from God. These men are preaching the truth. But she was doing it in a way to interrupt the service. And we all know how Paul was with women. Come on now. Are y'all actually getting read those verses? That was all Paul. Have the women shut up. Don't let them talk till they get home. Are you following me? Are we quiet in here? Is it, we can't pull that out either. Come on now. Now, thank God the rest of the apostles all didn't say that too. Come on now. Y'all getting quiet in here. But we know Paul's attitude towards women. He wasn't even married. Come on now. And we know the shortage of men. He wasn't even married. He was like, I'm bad all about, I'm a Benjamite. I don't need no woman. Hey, man, I got this. So here's what happens. He gets angry the Bible. He gets upset, and that's why he casted the demon out of her. Because she'd been doing that for days. The assignment at that time wasn't because he could have done it any time. But he finally, this is my, if you read it, he finally got fed up casted the demon out of her and when the demon was casted out her master got angry because now he was messing with their money and that's why he was beaten and thrown in jail listen he wasn't beaten and thrown in jail because he was preaching the gospel he was beaten and thrown in jail i believe because he got upset and casted the demon out hey, look jesus didn't cast every demon out all the time he didn't do it sometimes he would just say "Shh, silent be silent are you following me 
So we have to understand the assignment. We have to listen to the voice of God. Some of us, we cut our own ministry short. Well, they, I, was, I was ministering to young people, and they put me out. No, no, no. They asked you not to bring a Bible, and you thought it was important enough to bring a Bible, but you already had the word hidden in your heart. You could have had five more years of helping those souls in prison, but you were determined you were going to sling oil on them. You were determined to speak in tongues out loud. You were determined to bring up. You were determined to tell all of them you're going to hell, and you can preach the gospel without telling them anybody they're going to hell because Jesus says, I didn't come to condemn John 3, 16 and 17 says, I didn't come to condemn because you know you're going to hell already. I don't have to tell you that. That's in the Word. Now, there's a place for that. I don't mind telling someone they can go to hell. It kind of, kind of feels good sometimes to do that in Jesus' name. But are you following me? If it's not the assignment, you cut yourself short and it wasn't the devil who hindered you. You hindered yourself. What did Paul say? I don't care what the Holy Spirit says. We're going into Asia. I want some of that food. We're going into Asia. I know, I know, I need help. Number four. Number four is the assignment. And we're almost done here. It's the last part here. Number four is the assignment. You're going to be graded on not my assignment, not your neighbor's assignment, not T.D. Jake's assignment. Look, look, we all want the better assignments, don't we? God, my son, I've called you to clean toilet bowls. Say, no, that, that's the devil. I bind you, Satan. I, 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 I know of a true real-life story. That there's a couple of them. One of them is Naaman, who was the king. Do you know how he found the Lord and got his breakthrough? Because of his servant girl who was in his house. There's a true story of, of a drug dealer, big cartel drug dealer, and it was a Christian woman who was working in his house. Saw, saw all the stuff that he did and everything. And God says, you just, you just stay there. You remain there. And one day when he had a down moment, she witnessed to him and he got saved. But, but you see, we, we don't want, look, we want to choose. The, let me help you some. You don't have a choice in the assignment. Some of y'all might not like me. I don't like some of y'all. But once we understand my life. Is not my own. I've been bought with a price. So I do the assignment out of love for him. I do the assignment not out of what I pick and choose. Sometimes he might give you a choice. But sometimes it's thus saith the Lord. And it has nothing to do with your feelings. Nothing to do with your emotions. Nothing to do with your convenience. And nothing to do with your gifts and talents. Well, obviously, I'm supposed to be on the praise and worship team. I can sing. Don't you assume God called you to sing in this church or any church. He might call you to do something else. Well, I'm not good at that. It doesn't matter. Sometimes he calls us to do the things we can't do because when we do them, he gets the glory instead of you. Because if he only calls you to do the things you can do already, what glory is in that? Come on now. That's why he says, I choose the foolish things uh, and the base things, amen, of this world uh, so that those who think they're so smart and those, that's what the Bible even says that. He does the opposite sometimes. Here's, here's what it says about your assignment. Then we're going to close. Acts chapter 1, verse 6 through 8. While the apostles, not just the followers of Jesus, not just the apostles, Shown up, ordained by now. We're still with Jesus. They asked him, Lord, are you now going to give Israel its own king again? Same question that they asked in the wilderness. When God said, I am your king, that wasn't good enough for them in the Old Testament. And after all Jesus did, including dying and rising from the dead, that wasn't good enough. They were like, we want a king. On this earth, Jesus said to them, you don't need to know the time of those events. That only the Father controls, but the Holy Spirit, my God, will come upon you and give you power. Then you will tell everyone about me in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, 
in Samaria and everywhere in the world. The King James says, go ye therefore. And, but listen carefully. I'm going to close on this, and then we're going to pray for you this morning. Amen? Amen. Trying to end our services as early as we can so we can have time to pray. Not just teach the word, but to break some yokes. Amen? Amen. So this word doesn't just stay here. Boop. We need to go into here, into your heart, and into your spirit. Because that's when it will start to bring change. Check this out. They asked a legitimate question. How many of y'all feel like the government could be better? Raise your hand. I don't care if you red, blue, whatever. You, I mean, the government could be better and make better decisions and housing prices need to come down. And, and those are all legitimate things. And so when they went to Jesus with this, he didn't say, I don't care about that. Read what it says. He pretty much said, well, you know, you got to reach out to the Father on that one. Why? Because that's not my assignment. The Holy Spirit empowers me. The Bible calls him the Christ, and Christ means anointed one, and, and the anointing is, is given to someone or developed in their life so they can have power, but it's always power to do something. He wasn't powerful just so he could come down here and do what he wanted to do. He was powerful so he could go to the cross and die and rise to save us. So when they approached him about doing a good thing, having a good president, that's a good thing. Having a better economy, that's a good thing. He didn't say that doesn't matter. He said, look, that might be important. Talk to the Father about that, but don't take me off course because the anointing in my life, my God, I feel the anointing right now. The Holy Spirit who leads me and guides me has brought me here for one thing, to die on that Christ cross, to rise from the dead, and then to give you your assignment. And he told them, your assignment is not a political or a natural one. And Matthew said, I will be with you always. But he says, go and make disciples. He's not going to be with you out of randomness. He's with you if you do the assignment. All power is given unto me, he says, in Matthew, I believe. Then he says, go ye therefore. So here's what it says. I'm closing it out. Verse 8. But the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And give you power for what? The assignment. You will tell everyone about me. That's the assignment. That's the assignment. That's the assignment. That was the assignment for them. And I know in general, that's the assignment for us. But, but listen carefully as I close right here. I don't know what your assignment is. I know what mine is. I put it on Facebook the other day. That's all I'm going to work on to the day I die. Why isn't Pastor Doss starting a clown ministry? Why don't he hoop and why don't he wear a robe? Because it's not my assignment to wear a robe. Just be thankful I'm wearing something. I have a question for you. Some of y'all are a little too happy about that. We're going to just... Well, I guess I get a D. Amen. But listen... My question is not about my assignment today. You came to a house where we know our assignment. The question is, if I came to your house, do you know what your assignment is? Now, I'm not here to put you down. If you don't know it, it's okay to say, I don't know it. But today's sermon is to open up your heart and your eyes so when you plead at the throne room of God, stop asking for 10 more Cadillacs and another husband. You couldn't work the five you had. Amen. Now you want another one like that's going to be the answer. Amen. But the prayer needs to be God. What is my assignment? Why? Because in your assignment, that's where the Holy Spirit is going to meet you. In your assignment, that is where you'll, you'll receive fulfillment. Song, I think one of the Clark sisters wrote that but the best place to be in the whole world is in the will of God. Even if you make your bed and if God sends you into hell, if that's his will, he will be with you. But, but if you go like, like uh, uh, um, um, Nimrod and try to build a tower to heaven, you're not going to make it. But Lord, I was doing a good thing. I had a good plan. I had good vision. But if it wasn't the assignment, he is not with you. I'm going to go there. I'm going to close on that. I might have half a church next Sunday. I know you're going to come for the free food, but listen. I might have a half church the Sunday after that, and we're back in the building. 
But listen, listen, listen. If you're not on the assignment, he has no obligation to be with you. That's the word. Now, can I tell you about his grace? When you went and got that crack, he was still with you. Come on now. When you went in the wrong marriage, he didn't let you get killed. He was So his grace... And his mercy, but he doesn't have to. But listen, if I'm on the assignment, Paul would do things like I prayed twice or three times and be like, Lord, you have to show up. Why? Because you're proud, you're indignant. No, because I'm on the assignment. And when I'm on the assignment, I expect God to show up because I'm not out here working for me. That's what the Bible says. Touch not, touch not the Lord's anointed. Not because they're better than you. But if they're on assignment and you mess with them, you get the judgment of the Lord. Some of y'all getting excited. Now you want some folk to get killed, right? You need to be on assignment. The protection of God is when you're on assignment. The grace of God is when you're on assignment. The glory of God is when you're on assignment. The provision, come on, the dollars are with you when you're on assignment. When you're not on assignment, I don't care what you're doing then technically you're all by yourself. Bow your hands, close your eyes. Amen. Real quick, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we want to give you an opportunity to get that straight. We, we got to be real. Some of y'all have been coming to Revive Church Sunday after Sunday, and I don't know, I'm thinking about it. This is the Sunday where you need to just go ahead and make it happen. Today is the day of decision. If you're watching online or you're here in person and either you've never given your heart to Jesus or maybe you did but you're not living for him right now or maybe you're just not sure, today can be your day, September 18th, 2022 can be the day where you make sure that your life is right with God. If that's you, raise your hand. I'll say a prayer with you right where you're seated. Anybody, put it up. I see your hand. Anybody else? Come on, let's not play church anymore. Anybody else? I see your hand. I see your hand. Anybody else? If you're watching online at this time, just type it in. But let's go ahead and pray with them together. Say, Lord Jesus. If you raise your hand, repeat this. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me, giving your life for me. I thank you, God, that I was your assignment. I ask you to come into my heart, wash away my sins, make me a new person, help me to live for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're still in God's presence right now. If you said that prayer, make sure you tell somebody, let them know that you might not look different today, but you're saved. You're a child of God. You're born again. Why? Because you wanted to be and you said yes. I want to pray for those of us who Number one, I pray for a few different things, but you, you really don't know what your assignment is. You have no clue or you're not sure about it. Can you stand to your feet right where you are? And I'm going to pray for you. You don't know, you're not sure. You know, this is the Sunday to do it. Come on now, this is okay. I'm going to pray for you because you have an assignment. We all have an assignment. We all have something that God wants us to do. And for, for some of us, it's multiple assignments. Heavenly Father, right now, God, we just breathe the breath of life over the people who are standing and, and watching online, Lord God, and as they receive this prayer. Heavenly Father, begin to open their eyes, Lord God. The prophet had the power, woo, to open his servant's eyes. And as a prophet of the living God, I have the authority to help open people's eyes. In the name of Jesus, I pray and declare that every eye shall be opened spiritually, Lord God, that they will begin to see what they've never seen before. God, that they would have an ear to hear spiritually. They begin to hear what they've never heard before. In the name of Jesus, I command blind eyes and deaf ears to open. Spiritually and naturally, I command them to open. God, that they wouldn't hear my voice. They would hear yours. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Now, I'm going to pray for those of you. Let's be real. I'm going to see. I'm going to see if I have some, some real Christians or some fake Christians. I want to pray for y'all who know what your assignment is, but you are having a hard time wanting to do it. Right? You stand up. I'm going to pray for you now. 
you know what it is. Come on now. You don't want to do it, don't feel like doing it. It's hard to do it. Come on now. But you know at least one of those assignments. Amen. The Holy Spirit just told me something. He just told me something. He said that the greater you've been praying for is on the other side of that yes. That means... The assignment you don't want might just be a test for the assignments that you do want that will come after it. Come on now. The Bible says, listen, Mary was not a virgin all her life. Mary was not, she just had to hold on long enough for the first assignment. And the Bible says that Mary and Joseph had a whole bunch of kids after that. Come on, for some of us, the stuff you want, and you're like, God, why are you not giving me that? And God has said, I don't mind giving you that, but you give me what I want first. The tithe comes first. Come on now. Woo! The Bible says the first fruits come first. You give to God first. I'm not even just talking about your money and tithing. Don't get your head out of there. Yes, we want you to give money, but in your life, you're saying, God, here's what you're saying. I'll give you what you want, but you give me what I want first. God says it doesn't work that way. Elijah said, woman, if you want to eat, you feed me first, and then you and your son can have all the food that you want. Our problem is we don't trust God enough. Come on now. Anybody else, you know what it is, or you think you know what it is, but you're like, no, Lord, I don't want to do that. I don't want any parts of that. Have you struggled doing it? Stand to your feet. Don't come to me after service. I will not have the anointing. I have the shake hands anointing after church. If you need this prayer and you know what your assignment is or you think you know what it is and you're struggling with wanting to do it, we might not pray for this again for 10 years. If that's you, I dare you to get up on your feet because God will give you the grace. He will give you this. Come on. If Jesus struggled with his assignment, come on. If Jesus, if Jesus the son of the living God struggled with his assignment, then why would it be strange that we who are not even as awesome as he is might struggle with ours? Anybody else about to pray? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift your hands to heaven if you're standing. Heavenly Father, for those who are standing right now, God, I just pray that you release an anointing God, that even as they were willing to stand, some of them are trembling. For some of y'all, the assignment, it might cost you your life. Let's just be real. For some of y'all, the assignment might be humbling yourself before people who laughed at you, who scorned you. Maybe God wants you to forgive your rapist and your molester. Come on. These are all horrific things, but the cross was a horrific cross. And God will give you the grace and the strength. The Bible says when Stephen was being stoned to death, the way that it wrote it, he wasn't feeling a thing. All he saw was the glory of God. It was like he was watching a movie. Come on now. And Lord God, the assignment sometimes is difficult, but your grace is greater. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.